Welcome back to the Keep On Coding YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be doing a tier list for data structures. Why? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I just thought it'd be fun. So here we are. I did one of these a while back on programming languages. I'll leave a link to that. So be sure you to check that out if you haven't. Before we start, I know programmers can be pretty sensitive over these lists. So this is just my opinion. If you disagree, it's fine. I'm giving these ratings on the fly. So if I don't put your favorite data structure in S tier, don't take it personally. So with that being said, let's begin. So let's start with linked lists. Linked lists have always held a special place in my heart because not including arrays, they were the first data structure that I learned. And this is when I felt like programming really started to click with me. However, unless you're removing and adding elements from a, the beginning or the middle of a list, it's always better to use an array because of the constant access time to, to any element. You could use a hash map to map the nodes in a linked list, but this list, we're just basing it off of linked lists alone. So for that reason, I gotta throw it in B tier. Speaking of hash maps or hash tables, these are super useful when you need to access the same element over and over again. Uh, it gives you constant time to your elements most of the time. Obviously you have things like collisions that could affect that. And for me, it was it's one of the most fun data structures to implement. A negative of hash maps is that it doesn't keep track of the ordering. In Java, you could use something like a linked hash map, which does keep order. But again, we're, we're just going to rank these based on the core data structure, not any special implementation of it. Uh, so I can't put it in S tier for that reason, but I think I think an A, it, I think it's deserving of A tier. All right, next up, let's let's talk about graphs. Graphs are one of the most important data structures out there, and there are so many different flavors of graphs. A lot of other data structures derived from graphs, like binary trees. A lot of data like social media sites and how they keep track of who's friends with whom are stored as graphs. Obviously tons of famous algorithms related to them. Tons of interview problems revolve around them. I could go on, but I won't. So for that, I'm going to put this in S tier. Okay, next up, let's talk about arrays easiest S tier. Arrays are goaded, uh, the first data structure you learn and the one that you're gonna use the most. Gives you constant access to the elements, super easy to loop through. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Obviously there's downsides, like I mentioned, if you need to remove an item from the beginning of the list, then you have to shift all the elements over. But you know, you could always use a linked list if you need to do that a lot. And arrays are used to implement a lot of other data structures like stacks and queues. So easy S tier there. All right, what do we want to talk about next? Let's talk about, all right, so let's do, let's do binary trees. Binary trees, like I mentioned, a subset of graphs. This is also going to include binary search trees. I just couldn't fit binary search trees on this tile here. With binary search trees, you can do a lot of powerful operations efficiently, like inserting or deleting or searching can be done in log of n time if your tree is complete. However, outside of interviews and academics, I don't think I've used binary trees a whole lot in the real world. I think it's a great learning tool, but in terms of practical use, I haven't had much use for it. So for that reason, I got, I got to knock it down to maybe a B tier. B tier, and I'm going to put it ahead of linked lists. The next up, we have tries. Now, tries are a tree-like data structure that are used for storing prefixes. Prefixes, did I say prefixes? So it's really good for things like word searches, things like autocomplete. So if you're doing like a Google search, when you start typing something, it can look at previous searches and guess what you're looking for. And it can do that very efficiently. I'm sure Google search is a little bit more complicated than that, but actually for a Google interview, they did ask me to implement Google search with a try. Again, even though I really like tries and I think they're really cool, they are very niche. A very niche use case so i do have to knock it down a little bit i don't know if i can put it as the same level as a binary tree so it hurts me to do this but i gotta put it in c and maybe we'll change this later on but i'm gonna put this in c for now uh, let's do queues next so these are our first in first out data structure uh, super fast and flexible generally used if you need to process things in a specific order things like a, a cpu scheduler breath first search chat, message processing, anything where you need to process things in the order of when they came in. Uh, in terms of ranking, I'm kind of in between an A and a B. Initially, I was gonna put it as a B, but just because it has so many real world uses, I'm gonna put this in A. Next up, we have stacks. So very similar to queues in the way that they're implemented, except things that go in first 
come out last or things that go in last come out first. Same thing. Some real world examples of this are gonna be back and forward buttons on a browser, things like undo, redo function in, in text editors. So I'm gonna, I can't put this in the same level as Q because I feel like Q has more real world applications. And yes, I just on the fly decided that that's a criteria that I'm basing it on. And I really can't think of when I've ever used the stack outside of lead code. Just like tries, they're very useful, but not as, you know, it's very specific of when you can use it. So I'm gonna give it, uh, I'm gonna put it in the B tier. I think that's fair. All right, we got two more. Uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do heaps last. Let's talk about skip lists. Uh, skip lists are they're kind of a crappy data structure. Uh, they really have one use case. It's essentially a binary search tree that takes up unnecessary space. The one use case that it's good for is if you're doing concurrent operations. On a tree, you would have to lock the tree between operations, but you don't have to do that with a skip list. So I think it's good to know what they are and what they do, but I mean, most people haven't even heard of the skip list, so I gotta put it down here in trash tier. Last but not least, we have heaps. Now there are different types of heaps. I'm solely referring to binary heaps. So like a min heap or a max heap where you can get the largest or smallest value in constant time. Inserting and removing are done in log n time. So these are useful whenever you're trying to get like the K largest or smallest elements. Like a more useful case would be like a, you know, the top 10 most played songs on Spotify. I know that's a, that's a popular interview question. If you need to use a priority queue, languages like Java implement those using a heap under the hood. Obviously very powerful, very efficient. Where do we wanna rank this? I think based on those reasons, I'm gonna put it in A tier. I don't think I can put it ahead of hash maps. So I think I'm just gonna put these at the end at a low A tier. I'm gonna put heaps at a low A tier. I think that's fair. All right, so that is my data structures tier list. Let me know which ones you agree with, which ones you disagree with. And if you want me to do another one of these, maybe one with algorithms. So let me know about that. If you like the video, drop a like and comment, share with your friends. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.